Yo, what is up guys? Dale Boy here, aka Blue Collar Sports TV. A quick preview for Kel Brook versus Mark DeLuca. I actually just recorded this video, but I realised there was no sound. Thank you to the comments that uh, made me aware of that. So it's take two, the preview for Kel Brook versus Mark DeLuca. If you're new here, smash the subscribe button, it really helps me out. And also, if you guys could hit the like button, you know, once again, it, it really is appreciated. But this fight between Kel Brook and Mark DeLuca goes down on the 8th of February this weekend. Takes place at the Sheffield Arena in Yorkshire, England. And in the UK, this fight is broadcast on Sky Sports in the US on The Zone. This fight takes place at Super Welterweight. And essentially, this fight is a tune-up for Kel Brook. It's a comeback fight after a long time out of the ring. The last time Kel Brook fought... I believe was in December 2019, sorry, December 2018, and that's when he fought Michael Zarafa. So Kel Brook has been out of the ring for more than a year now, and, you know, quite frankly, his last performance against Michael Zarafa really wasn't great. So I think this fight against Mark DeLuca is essentially designed to make Kel Brook look good. Kel Brook, he's 34 years old, I certainly believe a guy is past his best at this stage. You know, he suffered two brutal back-to-back -back defeats to Gennady Golovkin and Errol Spence Jr. I think those fights took a lot out of him. But nevertheless, Kelbrook even now, in my opinion, should have too much class, too much pedigree for someone like Mark DeLuca. I have seen a bit of Mark DeLuca. There's not too much online. He's 5'9". He's got a longer reach than Kelbrook. I believe Mark DeLuca's reach is like 72 inches, whereas Kelbrook is 69 inches. So Mark DeLuca, I think, is a slightly bigger super welterweight. And his style is that of a basic pressure fighter. He's a southpaw. He likes to try and close the distance, get up to the mid-range or on the inside, and he likes to work up close. In particular, he likes to work the body. So he's a pressure fighter. And while Kelbrook has struggled with those styles in the past, not just against Errol Spence and Gennady Golovkin, but even lower level fighters like Michael Zarafa and Carson Jones, these guys also gave Kelbrook problems. So Brook can struggle against pressure fighters, but I've got to be honest, I don't think Mark DeLuca is even at the level of a Carson Jones or Michael Zarafa. I think Mark DeLuca is a bit worse than those guys. He's not a bad fighter, you know, he does some things well. Like I say, he works the body quite nicely. He seems fairly physically strong. You know, got he's got a, a decent gas tank from what I see. He's a decent fighter, but he should leave far too many openings for Kel Brook. In particular, that straight right hand, which is Kel Brook's best punch. Mark DeLuca is a southpaw. As we know, the southpaw's kryptonite is the straight right hand. And Mark DeLuca looks open for that shot, in my opinion. So look out for that Kel, uh, for Kel Brook right hand in this fight. I could see him timing that shot quite early and finding success with it. So yeah, this fight essentially is a tune-up for Kel Brook. You know, it's really designed to make him look good. And from what I see from Mark DeLuca, I think that's a possibility. I certainly expect Kel Brook to win this fight. And in my opinion, he needs to win it well. Because like I say, Kel Brook is 34 years old. Kel Brook, in my opinion, will go down as a wasted talent. I think the guy had a lot of he had a lot of ability, a lot of potential, but he never really realized it. You know, he's got one good one in his career, and that was against Sean Porter. He never made the most of his potential, and this really is is his last run. So, if he's serious about boxing like he says he is now, then he needs to take care of Mark DeLuca in good fashion so people get excited again and that they want to see him in, in big fights again. So yeah, important fight for Kelbrook but one I expect him to win. The only real question is how he looks doing it. But yeah, we fully expect Kel Brook to win this fight, and fairly decisively. Also on this card, you've got Kid Galahad versus Claudio Marrero. That fight is actually an IBF final eliminator at featherweight, and in my opinion, this is the best fight on the card, to be honest. I think this is the best fight on the card. Uh, world title eliminator, like I said. Kid Galahad, obviously coming off that loss to Josh Warrington in a close fight. Galahad is a really tricky boxer out of the Ingle gym. And Claudio Marrero has fought at a decent level. 
he actually fought Tugsot in the MBR fairly recently and, and went the distance. And the MBR can punch. He gave the MBR a few issues early on, but he lost that fight fairly decisively. But Claudio Marrero is a decent fighter, a former WBA interim champion. You know, arguably this would be Kid Galahad's best win should he win this fight. So I think it's a decent test for Kid, Cala uh, for Kid Galahad, but I do expect Kid Galahad to win the fight. Though I do expect it to be competitive. Decent fight between Kid Galahad and, uh, and Claudio Marrero. You also have some female boxing, for those of you interested in that. Again, female boxing has never been my cup of tea. I can't get into it. You've got Terry Harper versus Eva Wallstrom. Um, again, I, I can't sit here and BS to you guys. I'm, I'm really not interested. And the rest of the card, as you can see, not really much there. You've got Martin J. Ward. You know, he's having a stay busy fight against a guy called Jesus and Paran. Again, never heard of him. Don't really expect anything there. You've got Anthony Tomlinson, who's a welterweight prospect. He's fighting a guy called Stuart Burt. Never heard of Stuart Burt. I have seen a bit of Anthony Tomlinson. He looks okay at domestic level. We'll see how he looks in this fight. Dave Allen makes his return to the ring after that loss to David Price. Uh, Boxrex says he's fighting TBA, but from what I hear, he's actually going to be fighting Dorian Darch, who's obviously a journeyman from the UK. Uh, Dave Allen should win that fight, though it could be competitive early on. You've got, <coughs> sorry, Jesus. He, um, you've got prospect John Doherty. He's a uh, super middleweight prospect. He's actually quite decent. He's heavy-handed. He could be a guy to look out for. Anyway, he's on the card. Again, he's fighting a journeyman, so I expect him to win. But um, be interesting to see what he looks like. And you've got uh, Dante Dixon. I've heard a bit about Dante Dixon, but never seen him fight. So I'll try and check him out. And you've also got a guy called Callum Beardro or Beardo on this card at Cruiserweight. I've never actually heard of Callum Beardo, so if I can see him fight, I'll, I'll check him out. But yeah, I mean, if you look at the card, it's, uh, it, it's really not great, is it? You know, you've got one kind of competitive fight on the card. And in my opinion, that's between Kid Galahad and Claudio Marrero. Uh, Terry Harper versus Eva Wallstrom. Maybe that's competitive. I don't I don't know enough about female boxing to say so. So yeah, this card really, it, it, it's not a great card. And, you know, from Sky and Matchroom, you do expect a bit better. Obviously, not every card can be stacked from top to bottom. But this really is a weak card, I have to say. Anyway, share your thoughts below. What do you make of the main event? Can Mark DeLuca pull off the upset? Or like me, do you believe Kel Brook? will have too much and yeah anything on this card apart from the main event that you're looking forward to share your thoughts below peace